Argen Vost. We spoke to his spirit. The walls between life and death in this realm are thinner than I'm used to. It's as if death here is only a beginning, as if the torment stretches on indefinitely. What are we really hoping to achieve here? This cannot all be the work of the Count, it is too big. The gods of this realm must truly hate those pitiful souls that find themselves stuck here. But if we can bring the light back... Yes, Lathander, your light, it could change everything here. Yes, light, we must bring the light back. And we will. This is Red Moon Roleplaying. You begin to make your way back through the misty graveyard and back into the chapel. Using your internal logic, you find your way back through that abandoned dining room and then through a door that seems to lead straight into that main hallway. You are now at the bottom, passing by those stairs that led upwards. You notice at the top of the stairs, revenants have assembled now, at least four and the one with the hair. He looks at you sadly, remarking loudly, Please, you must now leave. There is nothing you can do for us. Just go. We will meet again, and we will give you peace, but not today. Not today. You notice the main entrance doors are wide open. Now, someone clearly opened them. Esmeralda knows what she's doing. She got the doors open, and... Well, I wonder if she sprung the trap. I suppose well, she'll have to ask her. I start moving um, to make my way out the main entrance. Indeed. I grunt and I move along. As you do so, you notice there was a giant portrait on the landing as you went up these grand stairs that would have once led into the many floors of the mansion. It is of the man you saw, that figure. Argen Vost? Yes. Long, dark hair falling to his shoulders, a handsome human face, and rich clothing worn on his person. Hmm, I stop at this, and I look up to see if there's anything around his neck. Any sort of necklace or anything that I could presume would be, uh, I, I don't know. A hint of how this gem would look. Yes. He seems to wear some sort of necklace with a blue jewel in its centre. No, not blue. Silver. A silver jewel encased in some ornate, dragon-like decorations. Hmm. And I nod to myself, somehow feeling a little bit reassured that we've still gotten out of this place, not completely empty-handed. But right now, I just want to get back to my horse. And you begin to move to the exit, and leave. You feel the eyes of those revenants staring at you as you go, and you notice the doors slowly close with a moan behind you. Outside on the stairway, you are immediately greeted by a click sound, and you notice the statue in front of you open its mouth. What do you do? I see this happen, and I <laughs> try to run back as quickly as possible. I try to get out of its way if it's something's going to fly out. Your fumbling doesn't really help, and the doors are closed and will not open. You cannot avoid this, Roman. The mouth is open. And you feel a cold gust of air blow over you. 
That is all. <sighs> I breathe out. Oh. Well, perhaps it was already taken care of, huh? Old traps. Maybe they've... I don't know. Been spent Just already. Just mechanisms broken down. Yes. Well, that is fortunate. Well. It's rather chilly, though. This cold wind blowing continuously from this mouth upon you. Oh, it's continuously blowing? Yes. Very lightly. It's rather unpleasant. Let's get out of here. I move away quickly from the, the statue. I do not wish to be close to it. Perhaps there is something far down in its reserves. And I look around for Esmeralda. Indeed. You both step off the stairs. The mouth starts to close again. And you hear a chuckle from somewhere nearby. As Esmeralda appears with the horses. I see you triggered the trap. Very deadly. You look very cold indeed. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, we have found... We have found something. We did not retrieve the blade, unfortunately. The being watching it was... Well, it was way too powerful, but... We know how to give these beings rest. They are the Order of the Silver Dragon, and they are now revenants. Spirits just... Waiting here and holding on to their hatred of Strahd. There is a jewel that Argenvost, the, the leader of these people, that he carried, that brings light. We need to get that jewel back, and we need to bring it to the top of this tower. That way, we can bring the light back to this place and give these creatures rest again. The only problem is that that jewel happens to be at Castle Ravenloft. That is indeed quite a problem says a familiar voice, stepping out then from behind Esmeralda. And now you notice a familiar wagon is also present. Hmm, so that's what you meant with we, I say. And uh, I had, uh, during the talk, I had gone over to my horse and just leaned my head towards it. But now I turn my attention back to the southern gathering. Indeed. It seems I have arrived on the moment too soon. Although you two are very lucky. Once again, you seem to have blundered into a situation and barely got out with your lives. Revenants, you say. They would have been very challenging for all four of us, never mind just you two. Still, you say the blade is within this location, guarded by the Revenants. And then you speak of a jewel and some rest. This is right. One of them seemed more forthcoming than the others. He said that they can't be convinced, or at least the one guarding the blade, unless the light is shone upon the place. And I tell them about the image of the light shining from a tower, and we talk about the, uh, the uh, mausoleum and the text that was there, and also the apparition of Argon Vast telling us this. Rudolph paces a little, leaning on his cane. In my notes, Lord Argenvost was the ruler of this Order of Knights. He established the Order long ago, longer than before even Strad came to these lands. He defended the valley from evil. In particular, a very specific evil place that exists high in the mountains, but that is neither here nor there. Hmm. It is said that he died, as did all his knights in Breverin, crushed by Strad when he took these lands via conquest. Interesting. Yes. And if we can give him rest, because, yes. Was that him? It was him, yes? We saw... We saw his form, I think, a winged creature. Yeah, you had some sort of strange form, and we also found an excerpt of some sort of journal that was probably his, and it said that he was going to show his true form, so it's probably more than just a human, I say as I st stroke my horse thoughtfully. Very much so. It was rumoured that he was far more indeed than a human. Interesting. Interesting indeed. 
Do you think he was somehow... Do you think these were some sort of... My mind is slowly starting to make connections. Do you think the, the form has something to do with some sort of draconic heritage? It is the Order of the Silver Dragon, after all. There must be more than just mm, the imagery being impressive. And there must be, surely, something more direct behind that name. Roll me a religion check. I get six. You certainly feel like you're making sense. You just wish you could remember something relevant. Although, silver dragon. Silver dragons. You think silver dragons are supposed to be good? Most dragons aren't. But maybe they were good? You can't recall much more than that, I'm afraid. Yes. Silver dragons are beings connected with the good side. With the good alignment. They fought for justice, fought for good. They prayed to Lathander. They were... Yes... They were people we would have been able to count as our allies, but in their current form, they are unfortunately an obstacle to us. But I think we know how to get them to stand down. We just need to find this jewel. We need to make our way into Ravenloft. And we have the plans to the building, fortunately. Yes, indeed you do. Rudolph paces a little. Esmeralda comes over at this point. Oh, this is good, then. We perhaps have a plan. Uh, although I'm not quite sure of all the details. Rudolph remarks, Of course you wouldn't be, Esmeralda. As always, you are much like them, running forward and not thinking. After all, you clearly ignored my request to not follow me and to remain safe. Yes, I know. Now what have you been doing all this time, thinking? How much have you managed to to do? I have concluded that the ruins of Perez are useless, merely a lost town in a marsh. Thankfully, you have at least saved us some time, I shall give you that. But I am still not happy with my friend here. Well, she has been very helpful to us. We owe her quite a debt of gratitude. She got us out of a very precarious situation at the Abbey. Indeed. Rudolf, they are friends. Uh, they can help. I know I know you have your reasons, but surely we cannot... I am aware of how useful they are. Thank you, Esmeralda. Hmm. None of you understand. You're all too young, too foolish. <laughs> anyway, we don't have time to talk about this sort of thing now. You need to get to Ravenloft, yes? And then you're going to need to get out again. Not easy. But you seem to have an idea. I am aware of a way out. It is how I got out when I first went there. And failed to defeat Strahd. You fought him? I did indeed. I was slightly brash as well when I first came here. I fought a simple quick attack on the castle and locating his tomb would suffice. I did not expect such opposition. He has gathered many minions and many traps. Luckily, I managed to escape. That is why I have then been going around in disguise, and why I have been trying to be undercover as much as possible. He is looking for me, as he is you. Well, then you, uh, maybe you could draw us a map, or make a description, and we could at least start getting an idea of where to get out of there. We need to sort of... Would you have any idea of what room would be a possible, I don't know, treasure room or, or, or some sort of vault where he would keep such a thing as this gem? No, I would not. However, below in the basements of the castle, I stumbled across a room. You will have found notes on it, I believe, already. Esmeralda has told me you read them and I've confirmed. He does appear to have some sort of portal room. It is able to go to various locations, I believe. I didn't really have enough time to discover more than that. I simply activated it and got through the 
nearest portal I could, which led me into the middle of the mountains somewhere. Right. So, have you been able to make more research of this or make more sense of how these portals work? No. Other than knowing that they do indeed work. However, we were to get in. If you could find your way to this area, it would be useful. Yes, these are one-way portals, yes? Only out. There is no way to use them to get in. Not that I know of. That would make sense. All right. So, regardless, let us make our way to some place where we can rest. Is the tower still safe? I am uncertain. Now I know who the interloper was, and he looks to Esmeralda, who sort of just shrugs. That at least is one avenue that is not so bad. However, I feel it might be unwise to return there. I am unsure. Esmeralda at this point pipes up. What do you think? Where should we go next? We must make our way to the castle, of course. Yet, before we endeavor inside, however we were to do that, we need to study the books and the the drawings properly, finding the right way in, and we must regain our powers. I must pray to Lathander. I am weak now, and I believe Roshek could also use a few moments of peace before we move against our enemy again. I uh, appear sort of distraught, deep in thought, just uh, stroking my horse, Almost looking a bit sad in my eyes. You look towards the manor for a moment, and you feel a familiar sensation. You feel something wanting to be let in. Do you let it in? Hmm. Yes. I let it go. And let it come. And there is no sound for a moment. And then a voice familiar. Roshek, you have done so well. Blade? Is it in your possession? Have you claimed it? No, I couldn't claim it. It's the Keeper. This big guardian wouldn't let us have it. Unfortunate. You must claim it. You must claim it soon, Roshek. And then, silence. And, uh, I feel still a bit beat down. But at least we have some sort of plan. Now look back at the others. Roman, you look to the sky. The weather seems to be clearing up a little. It's about well past midday now, but not entirely evening yet. Roshik is looking towards you. Rudolph seems to be in his own thoughts for a moment, and Esmeralda is waiting for your reply to her. What do you think we should do now? Well, we must rest first. Is there... Some place close to the castle that might do as as a resting place, a village perhaps. Would your cart be able to fit us all, perhaps? You would be very cramped. But otherwise, other than my tower, there is not really any secure place on the way to Ravenloft, other than of course Valakai. Yes, Valakai is not safe. Uh no. We best not go back to Valakai. There uh, was an incident there. He raises an eyebrow. It's going to be difficult to get around it. We're going to have to travel through the forests then. And if we do not go straight through Valakai, it is, after all, directly on the road to Ravenloft. Well, we don't know what the current situation is in Valakai. A little time has passed. Some things might have changed. Yes. Perhaps we could ride in the wagon. Perhaps that might help keep us hidden. If the powers at B are still the same in the city, then, uh, well, they would not be very happy to see us again, but they have rivals, and they, on the other hand, would be a lot happier. But uh, these are risks that we best not take. We have much, much more important things to do right now. But uh, let us make our way towards Ravenloft then, and... See if we can perhaps catch some, I don't know, rest on the way or stop somewhere. We definitely need to take some time before we endeavor forward. Rudolph! 
takes a moment to think and then nods his head. He quickly goes to the wagon and collects something. A hat, which he places back on his head. And again, he becomes the form of that half-elven individual called Rictavio. Very well. I think haste would be good in this situation. We need to make as much cover as much ground as we can. Going back to the tower, unfortunately, could have dangers. However, once we're past Valakai, we might need to... It might not be wise for all of us to attend to the castle straight away, but we can discuss that in a moment. We should be moving. You notice at this point, Roshek, ravens flying overhead. Ravens that came from the tower seem to be now crisscrossing around above you. Right. I'm thinking that... Uh, I'm saying this out loud. I'm thinking that... Uh, we uh, go on horse for as long as we can. When we get close to the town, then we'll do as you say, Roman. We'll get into the wagon, hide there, and if uh, we deem it possible, I think it would be good to try and get some rest at the tavern. Maybe we could get some news of what has happened in the town, and uh, uh, and then get some more rest before we move on towards Ravenloft. Yes, perhaps. Perhaps that is best. We certainly need the rest. And uh, those ravens were, well, a kind bunch. I would like to see them again. I hope that they have fared well in the time that we have been gone. Although I worry. Indeed. Although at this point, Rudolf moves the wagon and remarks, You will, though, have to encounter the individual in the wagon. It's best we do this now. It might get uncomfortable later. And he gestures for you to come over to the wagon. I follow. I give my uh, horse a final pass, and uh, I move over. He goes to the back, which you notice is heavily padlocked, and takes a key out of his jacket and begins to unlock the door. You notice the wagon start to rumble and move about a bit. You hear him say very loudly, Mishka! Down! Friends, Mishka! And he opens the back of the wagon. What do you two do? I, uh, I stand back expectantly, waiting for whatever is in there to come out, I suppose. And as he opens the doors, you see inside a creature. It comes forward immediately and roars at both of you. A white tiger is in the back of this wagon looks extremely ferocious as it roars at you. Again, Rudolf raises his hand. Mishka! Friends! Friends! Not enemies. Calm yourself. And the beast growls, but perhaps seems to calm, although it eyes you, Roshek. I stare back at it with my blue eyes. What a magnificent beast. I move towards it. It growls at you and comes forward in challenge. All right. Well, I kneel down and I hold out my hand towards it. Roll me an animal handling check. 17. It growls a little more, but it considers you. It considers the supplication that you are offering with your hand. It looks to Rudolph, comes forward a little more, and sniffs your hand. Hmm. I uh, angle my hand towards the side and I let it uh, sniff me and uh, familiarize itself with me. It sniffs you a few times, sort of regards you, and calms a little. It looks at you, Roman, growls a bit at you, and then sort of pads round back into the wagon, which you can now notice largely seems to be its pen. There's lots of straw everywhere, a few remnants of meat. I stand up and I fold my arms and I nod. Mishka. Mishka, well, why did you... Where did you obtain such a pet? I'm a circus master, remember? I travel collecting interesting things. <laughs> In this case, Mishka is a good friend of mine. She was vital to my plans. She might not be so vital now, true, but she is still a useful ally. Aren't you, Mishka? And he gives her a pet. Esmeralda comes over and also gives it a pet. It seems immediately friendly with her. 
I see now what you mean, that the cart would be a bit cramped. That is a large animal. Indeed. However, I'm sure you two will accommodate. You are, after all, so eager to blunder into things. I'm sure you won't mind dwelling with Mishka. I promise she won't eat you. Ha ha ha! Ha 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 <laughs> well, well, that would be appreciated, wouldn't it, Roman? It would. It would, I... Yes. I would not want to see the inside of a tiger's stomach. <laughs> oh, and I go back to my horse and I swing up on it. Roman, what do you do? Yes, well, we need to continue riding. I, um... Yes, I go to my horse and prepare to start the journey again. I wor worry about worry about the part where we will need to be in the wagon with the tiger. Really do not hope that we upset it somehow. And you all saddle up and begin to ride from this place. The mansion's eyes, almost like a human's eyes, still boring into you from behind. You begin to ride back on the main road. It takes you about an hour to finally return to the road you now are starting to become quite familiar with. It is, after all, the only road in this entire land that seems to have some paving on it, at least. And you turn then right and slowly feel like you are heading back to the road that leads to that massive lake and then the town of Valakai. Along the journey, though, it is getting darker. And for a moment, Roshek, you look to the side of the road and you think you notice something. Something sort of catches your eye a little way off the road. Not too far, but there seems to be a little clearing in the wood and you notice something there. What do you do? Uh, I say, wait a moment. There's something there. And I... Uh... I want to steer off and try to s investigate. Rudolph frowns a little, but nods and stops the wagon, and he starts to have a word with Esmeralda about something. Esmeralda looks to you, Roman, and remarks, oh, Maybe don't let him go alone. Don't tarry too much, yes? What do you do, Roman? I follow Roshik. I cannot l let him go by himself. Oh, it is not safe. Excellent. And you venture just a little into the woods. Roshik. How intimidating these woods feel, even just a moment entering. You feel reassured, perhaps, with your current plan. You wonder if your odds would be quite bad if you tried to simply go through the woods for bypassing the whole town of Alakai. They seem so thick, so untamed. Hmm. And yet, you continue to that alcove. There is someone there. It's an ogre. You know this ogre, Roshek. I, I, I suddenly seem to uh, be unable to find my words. B Boazrog, is that you? The ogre looks to you and smiles. It is indeed your old friend, alive, well, smiling at you. He's playing some drums. You remember his drums. Boazrog, I... I buried you with my own hands. How can you? <laughs> I thought you died. Yeah, yeah, I did. But I'm here. Isn't that funny? <laughs> <laughs> That's really funny. It's it's incredible. I walk over to him and uh, uh, to give him a big handshake. You know, I know he's gonna crush my hand. And he takes your hand and indeed crushes it a little. Roman, you come round and you see an ogre. And it's talking to Roshek. What do you do? He's already gone over to it and is speaking with it. What do you do? I stand back a bit. I am not trying to stay hidden or anything like that. I try to look mm, non-threatening. I simply look at this exchange between these two seeming friends, and I wonder how that is possible. What would that ogre be doing here? 
Has it also been drawn through the mist? But, but surely he said that it was dead. I have a bad feeling about this, but, but, I will allow him to continue this encounter. Oh, Rorschach, Rorschach, good to see you. You funny, always funny. Bosrog, what are you doing here, Bosrog? Out in the woods playing drums? It's just like old time. I play drum, you go distract, and we kill Watchmen, take all gold. Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha uh, those were the days. He looks to you, Roman, and remarks, Did Rorschach tell you? He likes story. He tell you when he killed Watchmen? They pleaded, no, we killed him, no. Good coin. He has many stories that he has shared. You seem to have had many adventures together. Did you also come here through the mist? Were you also led here by Avistani? Is that, is that how you come to find... Is that how you came to find yourself here? No. What was I doing? He pauses for a moment. Oh, yes. Yes. Rushik said, Hold door. So I went to hold some doors. I was guards on the other side. Him and Delafire and Bossman, they were getting out of the chest, you see, because we were robbing the people who was a good pillage. But then there was a problem. Uh, he frowns. Rorschach said, I'll be right back. You never came back, Rorschach. I put an axe in my head. Isn't that funny? I told him a story once. I said, isn't it funny if you imagine putting an axe in someone's head? And look! And he turns. And there's a gigantic axe wedged into his skull. I put an axe in my head, Roshek. Isn't that funny? <laughs> and I... And I... I can't help myself. But I start laughing. And I start laughing hysterically because this is this is the most ridiculous thing ever because indeed it was Boazrog that first told the story and made up the idea of picturing people with axes in their heads whenever one fell down. And now here he is with his huge axe wedged in his head, impossibly alive. Uh, I... I... <laughs> I... I, I sit down on the on the forest floor. How, how could you survive that, Bazrog? I don't think I did, Roshik. Why didn't you come back, Roshik? You said you would. You didn't. Remember old Garfoot? Remember that time he was holding the rope? And you said you'd come just back for him. But you told us to leave him. We did. He looks to you, Roman. As he told you about that, we had so many fun adventures. Took so much gold. Russia killed... Killed lots. He's a demon on the battlefield. Do you like that priest? Do you like those stories? I... I do not know. It is... A different world. It is a different way of life. Well, we've come to become friends here, and we... We do move in the same direction. We are trying to bring light to this land. I, uh... I pause a bit at this. And him bringing up these memories that aren't... Aren't very fond memories anymore. And, uh... I also don't like the idea that I didn't come back for him in time. I didn't want to be reminded of that. I don't. And I, uh, I stand up and I look at Brasrog and uh, I say, So what now? What are you gonna do now, Brasrog? Me, Roshek. I'm not gonna do anything. I'm dead. I just wonder, Roman, when's he going to leave an axe in your head? You're his friend? I was as well, he smiles. 
He likes axes in his friends' heads. <laughs> and blood starts to pour from his mouth, and his skin starts to rot and desiccate. His body almost seems to be falling apart as he laughs, Roshek. That laugh, he used to laugh so much. And I... Uh, uh, I feel... A strong sense of discomfort and almost dread starting to creep up my spine. Memories of the past and this old friend that I left as I did now falling apart in front of me and I uh, turn away my head. I stagger back a bit at the sight of this and I say... Come, come, Roshek. I do not know what this place is or what kind of magic resides here to to bring forth this long dead friend of yours, but but we have a long journey ahead of us. Don't let his words bother you. They are they are just words. Come, let us continue the journey. I uh. I try to keep my eyes away from the sights, and plus I can't resist taking one more look before leaving. The body falls in on itself, collapsing into blood and dust. Only its head remains, laughing with an axe in it. It says one more time as you turn away, Roman. You can hear it still behind you. Watch out for the axe in the head, Roman. I wonder when it will come for you. He's such a good friend. Friends to us all. Uh, uh, and finally, silence as this creature turns to dust. I, uh, as he does this, I look back at him again. And I look there. What axe was that? Was that a great axe? It looked like just a standard axe. Possibly from a soldier or a guardsman. They were quite well equipped the day he died. It was a daring raid. You did profit, though. Yeah, but with uh, losses, too. And at the expense of my word, which was probably the worst. Uh, and, uh... I don't know what to think of this. That's that's actually the day, the way that he died, with the axe in his head. I am taken aback by the words that I heard there about betrayal and about whether or not I can count on my friend, but I do not know if I've ever truly believed that I can. We are but travelers heading in the same direction at the end of the day, brought together by chance. That is it. And yet... Something inside you does, for a moment, question. How much do you know about Roshek? What was the story it was telling you? It speaks of pillaging, a good raids. What exactly has he told you? What he used to do? What do you think of that, Roman? What do you think of the idea of someone who pillages and raids? It goes against the teachings of Lathander, of course. Under... Yes... More normal circumstances, it might bother me more, but in this land, everything is upside down. Those that follow Lathander are great threats, and those hmm, that have a different viewpoint on life seems to sometimes be more reliable. I do not think that this is a place where I should judge. I tried judgment once against that boy. It did not end well. I cannot look at things in this land as black or white. Everything here is grey. Grey like the mist. Grey like the, the little light that comes in the morning. You return slowly to your horses. Robin, it sounds, mounts up. Rudolph merely nods at your return and starts to move the wagon and convoy on again. Roshek, you can still see his smile, the memory now tainted by blood. How do you feel? I, uh, 
I feel... I feel very... really bad. I, uh... It's like, yeah... What, what did I do? What was my life? But, uh, what did I do that created these stories? Uh, betrayed people that were near me. I failed the clan. You know, so many orcs died the day I tried to take command. I, uh, I don't want to think about that. Did you just hear a whisper on the wind? Remark quite peacefully. Why not? In your head. Huh. Are you ashamed of who you were? You shouldn't be. You shouldn't be. You're proud. You still are. Yes, yes, yes. Hmm. And, uh, pictures of my. My mom and my father comes back. And yes, I know they were proud of me. They kicked me out with a beating, but they were still proud. I should be proud too. I just don't feel it. Not now. This all feels a bit bitter. You're thinking these thoughts as you ride again for a few more minutes, ten or twenty. You feel within an hour or so you shall be at Valakai and then initiate your plan. But as you're lost in thought, you blink, Roshek, and notice the lake once again. And you look, and you see some activity going on. You notice an individual near a boat it's the day. It's still almost evening, but you can still see much better than you did last time. And where you suddenly remember seeing a light and something going out, you now do see indeed a boat. And there's a man or something, and there are many men around him. And they are holding him down at swords drawn. And you see one of the men with a very familiar forked beard. It's him, Roshek. It's the man who brought you here. You have listened to an episode of Red Moon Roleplaying, where we play the campaign Curse of Strahd for Dungeons & Dragons 5th Edition. Curse of Strahd was designed by Christopher Perkins and based on the adventure Ravenloft, written by Tracy and Laura Hickman in 1983. Dungeons and Dragons is published by Wizards of the Coast. The music is created by Metatron Omega, Flowers for Body Snatchers and Word Clock and is used with permission from their label Cryochamber. Visit cryochamber.bandcamp.com or their YouTube channel for more tasty dark ambient. A new episode of Red Moon Roleplaying is released every Friday. Please like our Facebook page and give us feedback, comments and input there. You can also visit us at redmoonroleplaying.com. Finally, a huge thank you to our growing base of supporters. You are truly amazing and inspire us so much to keep going with the show. If you haven't yet found us on Patreon, please have a look at the links in the description and see if you want to show your appreciation and encourage our work with the show there. While the show will always be free of charge to our listeners, Patreon supporters have access to extra material such as our bonus Q&A podcast, Ask for the Moon, where we discuss all topics and questions our Patreons have for us. You can even get access to the full-length, raw and unedited versions of our gaming sessions way before they are released as finished episodes. Thank you for listening. Looking forward to meeting again next week.